Hello, Miss Kimberly. Hello. How has your week been? It's been fantastic. This week is the big week of Maid Summit. So if you guys have not caught that and got a free ticket, please do so. And then there's an all access pass. We can leave the link for the all access, all access pass plus bonuses is how they're labeling it. You can check out my talk. And then there are 39 other cleaning business professionals wow. or influencers or clean influencers. I don't know what, how Angela Brown does her thing. I think she's considered a clean influencer, right? Is that what she calls herself? I think um, so. I think there's now 40 of us. Um, so it's pretty exciting to watch the stats come in and answer the questions and make, make an impact in the industry. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I mean, just like, that's huge getting into something like that. That is just so huge. Do you know that, right? Right. It's, I is feel very, in, yeah? um, very humbled and fortunate to have participated this year for sure. Do you feel like it's set in, like you're not as nervous anymore and you feel like your imposter syndrome is gone? Oh yeah. No, it was only when I had to hand in the video and I got to see everyone else's work. That was the whole intimidation. Like I'm not worthy. I'm over it now, but <laughs> you're like, I'm good now. <laughs> like, well, I, so got I had to hand it in and they had already <laughs> handed in their stuff. I was like, okay, you're like, we're good. I'm good. We're all good. Oh, well, today I just, I wanted to take some time out because I know we're doing a podcast and I wanted just to interview you because um, I don't think a lot of people know, you know, your mission and why you wanted to um, be a cleaning business coach. You know, there's a lot to it. You can't just decide to wake up one day and be like, I'm going to be a cleaning business coach and then start right. doing stuff and not have the the education behind it and knowing so how important. to be a cleaning business. Yeah. Like you need to know your stuff before you just decide to be a cleaning business coach and not have any knowledge on the cleaning industry. Right. So I thought it'd be kind of fun today to interview you. And, um, so is it okay if I interview you today? Of, of course, is definitely. It, you feel weird that I'm going to be interviewing you? Yes. I feel awkward, but it's totally okay. <laughs> are you working up a sweat yet? Are you nervous? No. <laughs> I have to just throw it out there. So I have to ask Shannon, like when, when did you first start getting your toes wet into the cleaning industry? Like how did it first get started? Well, I guess we could go back to the evolution of Clean Freaks University. So um, I was living in a different house at the time and it's hard to believe it's been almost, it's been eight years. Um, so in 2015, I, and this is how I usually come up with my business names. It always comes to me in a dream. I'm not sure why it's just the way it's delivered. Of course. And, um, I'm like, I want to create this website that is going to be helpful to the industry because I knew so much and I had experienced so much that I wanted to share that knowledge because, when I started and I know I sound like my grandparents, Oh, when we go to school, we had to draw, walk through the snow, but in an actuality, the internet wasn't, it was still kind of a newer thing. There wasn't a lot of resources. There was no Facebook groups. If there were Facebook groups, they were really small. No one really kind of knew what that stuff was. Um, so in 2015, I had this dream. I'm like, I'm going to call my next business clean freaks university. So I bought the domain struggled for about a year and a half trying to figure out how to build the website on WordPress, which is very complicated yep. and overwhelming in itself. <laughs> so um, I eventually got something up and going and um, I went through GoDaddy initially and switched over and got a WordPress site. And then um, here it's, here it is, you know, all this time later, I've had two websites redo um, done and in, in the growth that I've had. And um, I really wanted to have an opportunity for someone to prepare them for the stuff they need. Because in the past, when you actually started in the cleaning industry, you could buy a franchise for a half a million dollars and they would teach you everything you needed to know. But that was the, the threshold, right? That was the payment point of mm -hmm. you pay the $500,000 and we'll give you all the information. Well, when I started, there was no information. There's, I, re I always referenced two books. There was two books on the market, one on the internet, one from the bookstore. And it didn't talk about anything about the back end because when we get into this industry, it's so much like anybody can clean, sort of, <laughs> as we're yeah. seeing, but not everyone discusses the back end part of the business. And a lot of people do it wrong. Um, I still, to this day, cringe on some of the comments that I see and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yep. So I have to politely reach out through messenger and be discreet and like, Hey, I don't know if you are aware. And sometimes they are, and sometimes they just don't care. It's a, like a bad TikTok video. <laughs> But that's how it, it all kind of just kind of layered upon layered upon layered of 
working through what really was going to be my demographic. And there is, you know, there are higher end business coaches, but I kind of wanted to help the guys at the bottom get to where they need to be and have a good base so that they could get up to the top and because yeah. they would already have structures in place. Cause a lot of times when we're new business owners, we don't have any structures. It's we're hitting the ground running. We don't, you know, the bookkeeping's kind of getting done. My schedule kind of might be running smooth, it, but it's always chaos, right? Who likes to work in trial by fire? I don't. I've been doing that lately. I don't know how I'm surviving. Right. Trial but by fire is never fun. No one yeah. goes, Hey, I want trial by fire. Yeah, exactly. So when did you start the cleaning? Like, did you start cleaning yourself at a house and then you just kind of worked did. up? I did. Um, how did you get started cleaning? The economy went down is how I started. So I had, I, I'm a jewelry designer by trade. I, I'm silversmith, dabbled in it, did it professionally, did a lot of jewelry store, um, jewelry shows. And then I had my own um, brick and mortar. We used to, in the summer, do over close to a hundred jewelry shows. Wow. So my adult children were roadies. <laughs> it was set up, take down, set up, take down. And we would like camp, you know, cause it was in California and we'd camp along the way and we'd be gone for the whole summer. Um, but then, you know, I came up here and I had a brick and mortar, which was totally fun. And I, it was a great experience. I learned a lot, but then 2007 kind of had this bubble yep. and then 2008 smacked us all around. Yeah. I remember that. When I first got into business and I had several businesses throughout my life. I, when I got out of college, the first recession, I was already poor. So it didn't, <laughs> it exactly. made no difference to me. It had no impact, right? I was poor college kid. <laughs> Just coming I, out, no money. Difference. But then this one came and I wasn't expecting it. It kind of blindsided me. Now I, you know, I have experience, life experience. So now yep. I can see, you know, what's happening now and all that stuff, but that's, so I wanted to stay in my area and I went around applying everywhere and I was overqualified for most of the jobs because I have three college degrees. <laughs> oh, jeez. What did you get a Nobody college degree for? Me. So um, I was just like, I want to stay and I'm not leaving my small town because I live in Prescott. And um, Mary Mays was nice enough to hire me at $10 an hour. Wow. What was your degrees in though? I'm curious. Um, international relations, business management, which is totally, absolutely useful yeah. unless you're in the um, industry, the finance industry. <laughs> and then um, I consider the silversmithing my um, third, even though it's labeled as a certificate. Um, they went to school for it. It's like a trade school. But yeah, it so I consider that. And then it's funny because when I was in high school, I told my counselor that I wasn't going to go to college and I was going to be an entrepreneur. And she just laughed and she goes, you should have some skill set. And I'm like, why do I need to take chemistry? And twice now I've had to use chemistry in my businesses once for silversmithing. Cause you have to know when melting points are and yep, the heat, what not to mix. And then now I'm in the cleaning industry and you have to know what not to mix and what the chemicals are. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's kind of interesting. So you just decided to, you worked, so you applied at Mary Maids and then you started working for Mary Maids. A, yeah, I started working for Mary Maids and it was interesting because the owners were always gone. And I was just like, God, this is a gold mine. I'm like, these guys are always gone. They're hardly ever here. The office mm -hmm. runs it. And I knew I worked, we worked in teams and I kind of watched the checks come in like all of them do. And I've done it myself. I'm like, well, they're getting, you know, they have 15 teams go out times two. And then, you know, you're trying to do the math on how much money they're pulling in and what the business is worth. And you're like, well, I want that. Right. So you're trying to figure out what's going to happen. So, um, long story short, the, um, Barbara owned the first Mary maids here. It had been around for over 20 years. She sold it to Jean and Bruce and I, we worked for the second set of owners. Well, Jean and Bruce were not experienced business owners. So I came in with a lot more experience than them. And I had to actually, I coached them for free. Didn't realize I was actually coaching. Yeah, <laughs> Didn't get like paid for it. A mere ten dollar an hour employee. I'm like, no, you got to do it this way. And then um, she had said that she was going to give me a raise, and then went on vacation and was gone, and never gave me my raise, and I got mad. And that's oh, wow. <laughs> that was the start. <laughs> You're like, I could do this <laughs> off uh, of Castle Keeper Cleaning, and then I um I didn't take any clients with me because it's all about integrity, and um. I didn't, even when they wanted to jump over, I'm like, you know, you need to leave on good terms. I don't want to be in the middle of any drama, blah, blah, blah. So um, push comes to shove. I end up getting 43 clients and wow. I like, uh, you know, again, there's not really any internet. There's no Facebook groups. There's no reference point to how, what to do next. So I had to, to market the wheel yeah, and to get help. And I ran my first business out of my house. So when you came over to my house, 
because we would have barbecues and everything else you had to walk over cleaning kits because I, <laughs> I didn't have a garage <laughs> yeah so how did you market then back then um it was interesting because um a lot of people and i didn't know any better i was charging by the hour shamefully um it was word of mouth. And then I started to advertise more and I advertised with the local paper, believe it or not. We still have a print paper here in town. I think it used to be like 50 pages or 75 pages. I think it's like seven now. Print is almost dead. <laughs> but for over five years, I ran an ad once a week and um, that's how I advertised. It was, um, I want to say I spent $9,000 and that was big. I mean, yeah, I remember that's when huge. I you know, trying to spend nine grand, but they would, they would let me make payments. We, we negotiated and they let me make weekly payments. And that's how I ended up advertising or I would trade for advertising. So, I mean, that's just, that's key because I feel like, you know, this day and age, it's all about social media marketing, mm -hmm. marketing, and then you can get free marketing, you know, if you can just do all that. But honestly, I feel the strongest marketing is word of mouth, kind of like how you built your clientele mm -hmm. from the ground up. And it was word of mouth. That's huge. And, um, you know, now we have all this social media so people can use that, but I still think we need to go back to being old school and still reaching out to our clients and asking them to refer us, you know, if they like us, refer us. I can tell you that if you provide any sort of customer service, that will give you an edge over the rest of the competition. Yeah. So many times I run into people, they don't want to do the face-to-face. -face, they don't want to text message. They don't want to, they just want the money and to do the service. They don't want to engage and establish a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I wish it would go back to word of mouth. I think that that might be a dead and dying art. Um, and it's great to get word of mouth. I had a client for a long time who was below market value um, and ended up you know, pushing her to raise her rates. And she dropped me. And she, when I really looked at the hard cost, yeah, she gave me, I don't know, 20 or 30 referrals that became customers. It was well worth for me to take a hit on her That's price okay. in retrospect than it was for me to lose the 30 references she gave me. So you got to weigh that out too, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Weigh that out. So what do you feel like was the biggest challenge you had in your cleaning business? Um, initially it was having clear boundaries. Um, you know, people, people don't care. They'll work you seven days a week. Um, and then you have no family life and then you can get burned out and then you end up getting sick and they don't care. They'll look for the next cleaner. So they you call have to you have, all hours of the night, you text mm -hmm. you all hours of the night. Yep. And so you have to have boundaries, one phone, two phones, and these are my office hours. <laughs> and you can't call me at nine o'clock at night because so-and-so forgot to put the pillow back in the right spot on your bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Or they're missing something. They'll call you at nine o'clock. I can't find this. Where did it go? I need you to mm -hmm. come to my house right now and help me find it. Mm -hmm. no. Or the no. passcode they had taped onto the bottom of the keyboard. And it was actually the husband who removed it and didn't say anything. And yep. they're fully scra scrambling around, <laughs> screaming at you. And you're like, it's 1030 at night. And I'm like, can we discuss this when I'm open for business hours? Yeah. So setting those clear boundaries was a huge thing for you mm -hmm. that you needed to have. Definitely. And you, and you learn when you make mistakes, right? I've made a lot of mistakes. I know. <laughs> I and that's why that you're a lot. cleaning business coach. Right. So I made a lot of mistakes. I have a lot of experience. Um, this is my... I believe this is business number 10 or 11 for me. I'd actually have to go back and count the evolution chart of my businesses. So I've been an entrepreneur on and off since I was 12. So you're a serial entrepreneur. I guess I am. It's well, that's um, what they call me. That's what I got told the other day. I was a serial entrepreneur and that's like the new term. <laughs> is it, yeah. is it, it's an, I'm so, we're, we're part of the hip crowd, right? Yeah. Cause I mean, <laughs> It truly is called a serial entrepreneur. And it's, it's interesting. Cause I was like, at first I was like, what the heck? And I'm like, okay, I know I'm not that old, but that's how somebody explained it to me. And it's when you have multiple businesses that like you were an entrepreneur throughout your years. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah. So I just, I guess you are a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> well, I learned something new. Definitely. <laughs> so um, my next question would be like, what made you decide to be a cleaning business coach? I know you kind of touched basis on it in the beginning part, but what was mm -hmm. the what was the breaking point where you just said, I, I need to do this? Um, I saw a need and I, I wanted to fill it because I kept having people reach out to me and like, would you mentor me? Would you mentor me? Would you mentor me? And I, at the time, you know, I had a lot of stuff going on. You know, um, my brother was dying from his disease. He had early onset Parkinson. I had a lot of other things that I was dealing with. I had a cousin who was a drug addict that, you know, that took a lot of time. Um, there was a lot of things 
that happened. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then finally I had someone wave some cash my way <laughs> and said, I want you to teach me everything that you have learned um, because your, your business runs so much smooth. So I believe the exchange was, um, oh, there's a kitty. This is kitty my other kitty. kitty, kitty number two. I want to say that they, uh, they offered me like five grand um, to go through a pro. So I had to come up with, you know, a 12, 12 week system of what I was going to teach. So I literally went down while I was having like tea at night and I'm like, okay, one is going to be this, two is going to be this, blah, blah, blah. And I only take on, I'm going to probably have to increase it next year because I'm getting busier, but I typically only take on 10 to 15 one-on-one -on -one clients a year because I have other projects that I'm working on. But yeah, I just kept having people reach out. You're really good at what you're doing. Can you mentor awesome. me? Um, and then it, I kept saying, no, no, no. And then when someone offered me cash, I was like, mm, this could not be so, so how bad. How long would you do each session? When you first started, was it like an hour or did you? It was did um, you know literally to cut my, your very first, for your time? my very first one-on-one -on -one session was, um, I want to say it was 10 sessions um, for an hour each on Zoom. And then they got to have the recording and I kept the recording um, up for them for a whole year. And then I pulled it down off Dropbox and repurposed all those videos. But um, yeah, that was that was the start of it all. And then I was like, I wonder if I could make more of an impact. So I really wanted, and I, I, I say this a lot, I really want to change our industry. A lot of people struggle with price. It's the number one question I'm asked daily inside the group. Mm -hmm. And it's it's heartbreaking to see the manipulation, the mental manipulation that happens with a client who mm -hmm. indirectly is forcing someone to take a lesser than pay because in that person's mind, you are not worthy. When you start to realize that you are sending people in to clean the house or you're cleaning the house and you're paying the client to do it because yeah. they're on a budget, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take a step back and really look at and analyze what is causing you to make that decision. And every time it happens, you gotta go stop it. <laughs> or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you have to do to stop, to reword and re-mentally focus on why you're attracted to that particular type of person. And once you realize it, then it starts to come in. You're like, oh, stop. That's the, again, it's the boundaries, yep. right? Yep. The boundaries. And it's like, you have to, people need to see the change. It's going to happen. You know, we have to make our money. It's for our family. Yes. We love our clients, but you got to pay your bills. You got to be able to right. afford your supplies and grow if you want to grow. And that's why having like a cleaning business coach is so important because they specialize with the cleaning industry. So I think right. that's important. So and what being are the able to make a hundred grand in your very first year to gross mm -hmm. is expected. And it's easy to do if you just have the right tools. And, you know, I was seeing some things, I see this a lot in groups, Shannon, and it's like, they always say, well, they're just started or they're, you know, they're been in the, you know, the business for a year and they're like looking at like trying to get loans you know, what, where can I get a loan? Where can I get you know, some money or where can I? And I, I respond back. I'm like, you don't need loans. You guys, you do not need loans. You do not need extra money. You can make the money if you're pricing right. And you're charging mm -hmm. the right amount and you don't need loans. And I'm, I hope you guys are listening to this because I've seen it. And I'm sure you have too. Yeah. several times. Where can I get a loan for my business? You guys don't need a loan. You don't need a loan. You know, you need to reinvest back in your business and hire a business coach because that is where you're going to get your training. That's where you're going to get your money. So right. and, and you can either, there is another cleaning business coach. We won't name names here who their, their pitch is you can have a cleaning company without doing all the cleaning. And it's a great business model. And they've been featured in several news channels and several magazines and in actuality, um, there, it, it can be a business model that works, but there's a balance that has to happen and you have to be very careful. I mean, we have many discussions over W2s yeah. and 1099s, um, there, there, you have to transition out. So you don't need a loan. Cause that's a monkey on your back that you don't want. Yeah. Don't go into debt to start a business. Sweat equity works best. And, um, it, it, there's plenty of us now that if I don't resonate with you, then someone else might exactly. that you can follow their lead. They've already created, they've blazed this path for you. Follow it. Right. That's why I put all those things on the YouTube channel. So you can watch it at your leisure. You don't have to, you know, poke me in the middle of the night. I have a question. <laughs> so during, I'll poke you during dinner time or, you know, when right. you're trying to get kids to bed and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's important you guys, instead of 
like instead of taking a loan out, investing in a, a business coach, you know, cleaning business coach is key. And then you're going to see the turnaround. We've seen it for a lot of people that you've already done coaching for. We've mm -hmm. seen that. We've seen the money that they're bringing in. And so right. now they don't have to go get a loan. They don't have to get a loan because they were taught these key, the, the keys to growing their cleaning business. And we're watching it. We're seeing it. And right. they didn't have to take a loan out. So I think that's great. It's almost, it's just, I think it just hit over the 200 mark um, for the one program. And then um, I believe I've impacted almost 500 businesses. And then if you really think about the dollars, I know that I <clears> helped <throat> close last year alone. I think I closed $1.7 million in business. I held hands oh. and when I had that program and we walk through on what to say and how to say it. So that 1.7 is not a bad no. Not a bad gig. So that was, that was awesome to see the success on so many members of the group for sure. Definitely. It's grown. So what are the top three reasons why a cleaning business should hire you as a cleaning business coach? You need to have proven structures in place that work. You can get, a, there's so many business coaches. Oh my, it's overwhelming. I'm a business coach or I'm a digital content creator. And it's just like this whole, I'm this, I'm that. But in actuality, you want someone who's been in the industry, who has the experience. A lot of people want to become cleaning business coaches, but they don't have the real world experience to facilitate what those boundaries are, what those systems and places are. And um, then, you, then you can see it because I'm part of other, you know, Facebook groups too, for now anyway. Um, but you, <laughs> you can tell when someone is experienced in their trade versus not experienced. Um, and then unfortunately, sometimes they get misinformation. I don't think it's done intentional to be malicious. It's just lack of experience. You want someone yeah. who's been in business at least till the five-year mark. Um, there are a couple of us have been in here over 10 years. I know a couple of people have done it for 30 or 40 years and that's great. Um, but you have to have someone who's experienced in what they're doing. You can add, it's like dealing with a real estate agent, right? How do you yeah. tell if a real estate agent is good at what they're doing? Well, how many transactions have they done? I always tell this to people because we have in our area, which is a really small area. We now have 3,200 real estate agents. Wow. So how do you, how do you swim through all of the real estate agents? You have to ask them questions. How long have you been doing this? Is this your full-time job? Because if it's your full-time job, you have skin in the game, right? Exactly. Is this, um, how many transactions have you had in the last year? That will tell you everything you need to know. If you have someone who's been doing it for 20 years and they've had four transactions, it's a hobby. <laughs> They're relying on their significant other to support them while they have up and downs and it's not, it's selective, right? But exactly. if you have someone who's done 102 transactions, like one of my friends here in town and won an award, she ha she's moving and shaking. She genuinely does it full time. So that's how you tell um, experience. So like I do this full time. Someone else might do it part time until they transition mm -hmm. to full time. Um, that kind of tells you. And then the proof is in the pudding. I mean, I've helped over 400 businesses and they've all been successful. The only time the program doesn't work is when you don't do the work. <laughs> yeah, when you don't do your homework. Right, it, it doesn't, I can't hold your hand and make you do the work. If you don't want to work, if you don't want to do the work, I can't make it happen for you. Exactly. So is that like the main, that was the main reason you just wanted to see these businesses grow and you just wanted to like help them and see them develop. Is that where your heart is? Just seeing these clean yes. businesses? I want difference? to see as many of them hit, you know, it should be hypothetically speaking, if, if it was a perfect world, everyone would hit a hundred thousand dollars in their first year gross. And then on years twos and threes, they should hit about 200 to 250. Mm -hmm. If by year three, if you're not above the 250 mark, there's something wrong in one of your systems. And you need to look at that and figure out which system is broken. And it could yeah. be something that's obvious that you just don't see. And a lot of times as cleaners, because we try to do everything DIY, we're yeah. searching. I just spoke with someone the other day who, a student who went through my program and she was trying, she spent more time researching DIY in it than, and she goes, I wish I would have <laughs> in it, you uh -huh. know, at the beginning of the year, I would have been so much further along. So she goes, I spent all this time trying to figure out how to make the wheel work when I, you could have just held my hand. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, you guys can spend all that time and energy, but you could have invested it something in your company and you guys would have been making more money. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're not making as much money and you've wasted all that time. Yeah. So, Cause the system's broken. Yeah, exactly. So if you guys are thinking about it, definitely really look into 
you know, hiring a cleaning business coach. Um, you know, Shannon's been great. I've watched her just over the years, just develop and really help everybody out. Like she's just helps people out with just answering questions. And I think that's just so important. So you guys take the time out and invest back in your business. You don't need a loan Invest back in your business and it'll help get your systems in place. You're able to make that money quicker. Um, Definitely. What and are your- you, you can also write it off because it's yeah. education or coaching. I did it all the time too. And you did it. I know we've talked about this when we were walking in Ikea, we we're talking about like how all the training we did and we're like, yeah, we just wrote it off. You can write it off. Mm -hmm. It's training and education. If you fly to Las Vegas to go to, you know, a cleaning convention, then you can write that off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but what are your top three goals you think that you're working towards right now? I, um, my first goal and foremost for this year was to get the structure scale and profit cleaning business Academy to be online and digital. So you didn't need me to show up and do it. And then, um, that's actually been really great, which has given me more time to work on other projects. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm actually coming up with, um, some lower price point, um, digital products for you guys. Um, and so I'm getting ready to launch that. I'm hoping in September, and um, it'll be nice to have. I'm super excited to be able to offer um, these lower end products. And they're quickie little mini courses, about an hour in length, um, to teach you something that's relevant to your cleaning business. So, and the price point is going to be, there'll be an initial launch. So if you're not part of my email list, I highly recommend that you become part of it because um, I'm only giving this to my email list. I'm not, you the know, VIPs. throwing it out there. Right. So it, it's going to be a low end price point initially. And then after the launch, um, it will be a little bit of a higher price point. So it won't be very much like, for example, um, it could be anywhere from seven to nine to $11 for these little mini courses. That's and then so after, affordable. <clears throat> yeah, to make it for affordable for everyone. And these are really key points of stuff I get asked all the time, like <clears throat> how to onboard a W2. That's the first one that's going to be launched. It goes over step by step by step. It was really exactly. hard to narrow because you're not supposed to make them longer than an hour. So I had to condense because <laughs> I had too much information. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I might have a mini course and then the full course. But eventually after I launch whatever I decide I'm going to do, the price is going to go up probably just $27. Which but I want to make it affordable. It's right. What two coffees? Like you think what two coffees a week that you're, right. can, you know, not buy and then put it towards investing your business. Right. So I'm, I'm really excited to um, offer that point because there is my signature course. And then I have a lot of other courses like the pricing blueprint masterclass, but they can be a little pricey, especially if you're on a budget, but I want people to have access to this information because it's mm -hmm. still not there. And um, this way it'll be a, a low threshold for everyone to be able to get in and learn something from me. And I love that. And if you guys haven't, if you guys do save up money for that master blueprint pricing, because it is gold. It is its worth weight in gold and um, save up your money because it's going to be worth it, you guys. Definitely. And I think at the end of the year, it's going to go up even more in price. So far, I believe um, we haven't done a full total, but over a thousand businesses have gotten um, to wow. see the video of the pricing blueprint masterclass. And then when I initially launched it, I remember I left it up on the, in the group. I remember like that four days. So I, I want to believe that it was more than a thousand people that it impacted and that everyone is starting to charge what they're supposed to charge. Cause I, like I've mentioned, I want to impact this industry. <laughs> so, and I just, yeah, we have to make that change. And Shannon, you're doing it. You're making this movement happen. And I'm just so incredibly proud of you. What are your other two goals? Um, I'm working on a workbook, um, as how to start your cleaning business workbook with an actual pen and paper. I know everything is digital, but workbooks are nice to have for, you know, with a checklist, step one, do this, step two, do this. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so I am hoping to have that be right before Christmas. We're going to see, cause I do have, you know, littles and dogs and all that other stuff. birds, <laughs> 27 birds. birds, how many birds now? 27. Um, we have another clutch of parakeets. So I believe if they all hatch out, we'll have about 37 birds in the house. If you're oh looking to buy a bird, let me know. <laughs> There's a lot of birds, like parakeets, cockatiels. <laughs> it's like a jungle busy. at my house. Uh, well, I'm, I'm proud of you. And then, so that's for that's two. That's and two. then, um, and then... number three, I'm working on something that, um, is I'm doing, I'm still doing some market research, but I'm, I'm working on launching a membership 
And um, the membership would have more access to me, would have featured speakers um, where I am giving it. So it would be in addition to the Structure, Scale and Profit Cleaning Business Academy. So it would kind of add on an extra layer. And then that way we could all meet and collaborate once a week, um, you know, throughout the year. And I'm, I'm still kind of doing some market research, but I'm hoping to have that launched as well right before Christmas. We'll see. So I have a question for the workbook. Is that something that they can download digitally and print it out? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. hoping to have both. You can buy the hard copy and then the digital um, asset. Okay. That's what I was kind of curious because I know some people like to use their iPad and they write on their iPad. So I don't know mm -hmm. if that was a thing that you're going to do or if they would um, buy the workbook I don't know itself. if it's... Um, I might be a little technologically, I'm pretty technologically savvy, but I've never done anything like that. So I don't know if it's, if it's easy to do, I'm more than happy to do it. <laughs> or I would have to find someone who can, I don't know if it's a complicated thing or not to have to look into it, but okay. yeah, I'm hoping that um, they can do whatever they need to do to learn the stuff. Okay. That sounds good. And then, so you did your, tell me, tell me your three goals one more time so people can hear them. Cause okay. I want you guys to hear the goals because goals are achievable. If you make them achievable. And you put a time on them. So when you're going to achieve them. So right. let's hear your. So your there is the low the ticket time. items. Um, there are three. I have only announced one here for, as an example. Um, then there is the workbook. So okay. I'm almost done with it. I have to send it off and have someone do the mock-up, which is really expensive. I didn't realize yeah. how much it takes to have someone go through Canva and do that whole thing. It's, it's, it's not it's cheap. A lot. Yep. And then um, number three is the membership. So I'm going to have a membership that is open to um, people inside of my group um, who want to continue their education of learning all of the tricks and the ins and outs and how to, you know, maximize whatever they're doing. Those are the three goals. Do you have a goal set for next year yet that you want to achieve? Um, yes. You and I are going to do our own little maid summit over here. It's either going to be... Um, you know, somewhere in between probably Colorado and Arizona, but we are going to do that next year. Um, there's just too much going on with my, my old, for those of you who don't know, I have an 18 year old senior citizen dog, um, almost who's going to be 19, I believe next week. Aww. So that's, that's his gotcha date. So I don't really know his birthday, but that's the day that I got him. So um, yeah, it's, I'm hoping next year that we're going to be able to plan that. And um, so we can have our own retreat, not just other people who have yep. made summits and all that other stuff. We would have our <laughs> own and make it fun and you guys get to meet us and maybe have an interview on a podcast there with somebody. Yeah, then, no, that'd be awesome. Want to. So, well, Shannon, thank you. And how do they sign up for your, or how do they reach out to, how does, your, how does our listeners reach out to you if they do want to start working with you? And I know you offer, so I know that you offer a consultation. So explain your consultation. So if they do reach out to you, what is your consultation? Okay. So there are two options um, that are on my tidy cow and one of them, and I will talk to anybody for 15 minutes for free. If you have a general question that um, isn't going to take longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> so you get one, you get one, you can't keep calling and scheduling things with me and then trying to get free um, information. So you get one and then after that, we can decide if it's going to be, you know, um, something more or whatever it is you need. I have no problem doing that. And then I also have a free Q&A session that you can schedule on my calendar for the Structure, Scale and Profit Cleaning Business Academy um, to answer any and all of your questions on the program because it is um, a self-paced program that we do meet um, every two weeks um, or it depends on how many people are in the program at the time or once a month. Um, depending on my schedule and your guys' schedule. So um, there's that. And then you can actually reach me at Clean Freaks University. So K-L-E-A-N-F-R-E-A-K-S university at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to answer um, questions. And you can also go to my website where that's Clean Freaks University and you can leave me a message there as well. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you for just giving us a little back, like background on how you got started in the cleaning industry and your growth and where you are now, that's, you've come a long ways. Who would have ever thought that, you know, all those years <laughs> ago that here you are like a cleaning business coach and you went to the maid summit, like, right. It's like, it's nuts. And then I don't know about you, but I'm like looking at trying to go to the cleaning convention at spa. I don't know if you've thought about that at all. Or I've not. considered it or not. I know that, um, Ricky Fink does his own cocktails, cleaning cocktails. And I thought it might be fun. I have, I'm still ruminating over it because I still have my, my dog. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd have to try to figure that out. But um, 
I thought about going to the ISSA show. It's in Vegas. It's not too far. We should go, Shannon. <clears throat> and um, there's some coordination that needs to happen because I have littles. Um, but yeah, I, I really thought that even if we didn't go, like obviously a, it's too late to get a booth for this year and it's yeah. really expensive i don't know if you've ever tried to rent uh, a booth no at the i'm not going to it's like it, nine grand yeah and i can't it's do that really on top expensive of... <laughs> i'm like I, yeah i can bring all my pure evergreen products but i don't think i would sell nine grand just to like oh it's crazy and it's large so... it's a huge you could uh, it could take you three full days to walk through oh, the does. convention center it's yeah huge. And, and it's really cool to see what's coming in our industry it gives you an opportunity to talk to chemical suppliers um, so you could see, you know, if that's going to be your thing, or if you want wholesome, good products like Kim's products, um, I can't afford robots. to be, I cannot afford to be there, but you know, you guys know me, I have connections right here. Right. And then there's like, there's all, there's mop. They just added, um, the house cleaning industry for a long time. The ISSA was all strictly janitorial and commercial. I remember and, that. And they, then they half, they half weigh it. I'm not going to say half fast, but, um, they, slapped a name on it without even changing anything. And they said, oh, there's a house cleaning industry. I'm like, oh, thank you for acknowledging us. <laughs> but yeah, so if, if you guys do come, yeah, I was gonna say, if you guys do come, Shannon, you know, bring good walking shoes because the, mm -hmm. the convention room is massive, massive, massive. And miles and miles you'll walk. Yeah, be prepared. And I think I walked through part of it and then went to go get lunch and went to some classes and then walked some more and then went to, went to some more classes. So bring your walking shoes if you guys Definitely. Go. And I didn't get ISSA accepted needs for, to sponsor us. Oh, totally. It, it would be nice. I did apply and my, um, my talk wasn't, um, accepted, but I am going mm. to apply next year, but we'll see. Wasn't meant to be, you have, <clears> you <throat> did the maid summit and that was the step. So I'm proud Definitely. of you. Well, thank you guys for joining us today and, um, getting a chance to know Shannon a little bit more. I've been wanting to do this for a while and it's been on the schedule. So i um, make sure you guys check out all her information and get signed up and it'll be well worth it. Trust me, you guys. So Shannon, thank you again for blessing the industry and just serving the industry with your knowledge. I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you for having me on my um, my little interview here. That's really cool. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a good day, you guys. You too. Take care, everyone. Thanks for Bye. tuning in.